Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another full breakdown video for you guys today. As I'm trying to take a little bit of time away for the family, I thought it was the perfect time to put out another full offense or defense. If you guys don't know, I try to do this about every other month or so. Uh, I think the last one I put out was the Niners. I'll try to have a link in the description if you guys want to check that out. I put out the Niners, the Ravens, uh, a couple of good playbooks this year, a couple of defenses as well. But today, I'm going to give you guys what's one of my newest and latest offenses. And I'm going to give you about half of it, maybe like a third of it because i try not to give out the full thing based on the fact that there are a lot of people that buy these books and they get a little bit upset if they just bought an ebook and then I, I give it away for free so i'm going to give you guys a couple of full offensive breakdowns from the chicago bears offensive ebook that i put out not too long ago part of the reason that i do these full uh breakdowns or at least these partial breakdowns like this is to show you guys what you get if you actually you know order the the full ebook and the written ebooks have written descriptions and uh written um you know breakdowns on how to run the play and stuff like that uh, that these video versions don't have but i will timestamp them so it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to find the offensive formation or the offensive play that you're looking for uh, but at the end of the day like i said these are all just previews for my actual ebook so if you guys want more help or more money plays all you have to do is download them by clicking links in the description you can download them right away and if you want to see more videos like this as always please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button and let me know in the comment section other than that's going to get right into the video play that i would call before you know my active play would be the wide zone because it's essentially just a stretch play but I'm going to show you guys all the run plays first because there's a lot of run plays. Before I do that, though, if I know that I'm going to be running, uh, given the new uh, fatigue issues that's created by having a lot of tight ends on the field, I would say it's best to swap out. If you know you're going to run, to swap out this receiver here uh, with a backup tight end or a tight end in some manner. So I'm going to go ahead for the run plays. I'm going to put uh, whoever it is. It doesn't really matter. If I have a larger tight end or a better run blocking tight end, I can do that. But it doesn't really matter. I think Mercedes. Mercedes Lewis is probably the best blocking tight end, so I'm going to put him there. But since there will be times I'm going to need that route and pass plays, it might make more sense if you have a speedy tight end to put him there. A guy like Robert Tanya, or things like an 86 or an 88 speed. So there are multiple options there when it comes to your personnel, but I'm going to go and put Mercedes Lewis because, like I said, I'm going to be running the ball. Now, when it comes to the wide zone, there's a couple different things you can do with this play, but the way that I set this up with the two tight ends is so that I can run into the open side of the field because I'm really just going to sprint around my blocking. I don't have to make any emotions or any motions or adjustments. I could run it just like this, but I find it's best to motion this guy across into what looks like a bunch formation. And uh, for the most part, this is just going to create a wall of blockers that will help me to get around. I mean, there's nothing getting through there. I'm sealing that edge with those extra defenders, and I'm just sprinting to get an easy 10 yards. So that's one way to do it. You can also go the opposite direction. Obviously, I don't really want to do this unless I have um, you know the open side of the field. But you can see how I can create kind of the same look on the other side. So it's something that you can do. I mean, I motion across the receiver uh, rather than the tight end. Obviously, I want to motion across the tight end to seal that edge a little bit better. But this is something that you can do um, to try to, uh, you know, confuse your opponent, go the opposite way. And like I said, if you don't want to have any tells, uh, you don't have to create that wall of blocking at all. Uh, I can just run it like this, and I get a pretty good job. You can see right there, that guy got through right away. So to me, it's best to definitely motion that guy across. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you might be giving away where you're going, although a lot of times I'm going to be doing the same thing with some of the passing plays, so it's not necessarily a tell. But you can tell, tell about that tight bunch right there. I mean, nothing's getting through that, and it's creating me a hole pretty much every time, pretty consistent hole, as you can see right there. I mean, I didn't really get to the outside, but um, it's one of those things where you, even if your opponent knows you're going in that direction, you still got to stop it. Like right here, you know, the computer, let's let's say that they're, they're double safety blitzing is what it looks like. It doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Getting outside of that. So it's like that's not something you're typically going to run into. Too, but based on the fact that I have that extra blocking tight end and I can really seal that edge, it really doesn't matter. Now, that's my top outside run. My favorite inside run would be the halfback zone week. Now, you can do a pretty similar thing with this by motioning across to the tight end of the receiver just to show your opponent a different look. But you can see how the, the whole line shifted when I motioned that tight end across. So I think this play here actually works best if you continue that motion. And, and, and this is just for, as an opportunity to confuse your opponent. But continue that motion across and go to the weak side. Flip it and go to the weak side here. As you can see, I didn't necessarily get the, the most. This is probably going to be best. I typically only run this if my opponent comes out in something spread. Something uh, a little bit you know lighter in the box. Now, if they are running a lot of man zero blitzes or a lot of man blitzes in general, the better play to be is going to be the jet sweep. So, I don't know. This looks kind of like a man coverage. Uh, this is a good opportunity, as you can see here. I mean, we have a wide gap right up the middle there. A lot of times I'll take that. It's really, this is like a read option play. I'm reading the edge. If the edge gets outside, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to take it off short. But if he gets sucked in like he did there, I'm basically just going gonna, gonna to run around. And I have, you know, I just make sure I have one of my fastest guys there, which I think this is Mooney's, like a 93 speed. Uh, as we get a weird uh, prevent here because I pick random. 
But uh, but yeah, you have a lot of opportunities here uh, for big plays. Anytime you can get your, your the ball in the hands of your playmaker, it's going to be a big play. But this particular uh, play is going to be best against, like I said, man coverages and cover three and cover four because the, the cornerbacks drop back a lot of times taking themselves out of the play and not really helping out and run support. Although there, that was weird. I mean, I didn't even get the handoff. <laughs> as um, I mean, you know, some of some of the some of the Packers' interior defensive linemen are actually pretty good. But like I said, once again, I'm not even reading the coverages, and you can see them having success. The only thing that's really going to give this problems or stop this is going to be cover two with hard flats, as they're going to cut off these outside runs. Now, if your opponent starts chasing the jet motion or just over pursuing in any way, or just you know paying too much attention to the motion, you could always hit them with the zone fake jet. But that's not really going to work against the computer, so I'm not going to waste my time because basically that's something that really only works if the user starts following them across prematurely. That will open up the middle of the field for run plays the last run plays the counter why so the tight end's already going across so i'm not going to mess with him i'm just going to motion across mooney here it's a man coverage though so it's something where i don't necessarily have to do that it's going to work better against uh, against zone but you can see this is a good uh counter run play if your opponent is i mean obviously none of these are as good as the stretch you know what i mean like the stretch is the is the money play these are all just secondary plays but ultimately, um, you know, you can still have a lot of success doing this. Say you're in a league with a cooldown rule, you could always use this play as a replacement for the stretch. Because, you know, based on the fact that um, the tight end is motioning across too, and we have a pulling guard, it's like we have a bunch of blockers here, and then we're adding two to that bunch. So it's like the entire team's really pulling over to the side, and it can really open up some lanes. You can see I'm getting some pretty easy holes here from that play, but we also have a lot from the Z curl. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. On defense, we're gonna start off with cover two again, Tampa two. So for this play here, I really just gotta put the B receiver on a fade and motion him out, or I can put him on a 10 yard out route. There's a couple different options there, but then I wanna put the, the X route on a 10 yard in. And the reason for that is because I want him to occupy uh, that linebacker so I get this this guy open right over the middle. Now, you're not necessarily only going to get a one-play touchdown because you're throwing to a tight end. I'm going to go over some plays that didn't go over yet, like cover two man. There's a couple of good routes on the play here, like putting the X route on a streak so that the, uh, the Y receiver can get open outside. As you can see, it's a different type of corner route, and it can have more success than the previous corner route that I showed against cover two man. But you can also get the tight end open by motioning this guy out here and putting him on a fade. The Y tight end or the Y receiver, I want a smart route in this scenario because I want him to get that safety's attention. And you can see how this tight end can get open right over the middle uh, for once again, a big play. It's a tight end, so it's not necessarily gonna score every single time. Also works against man zero, so let's go and let's pick that. This play has a really good quick hitting route to the wide side if you just wanna work the Y receiver. Typically, if he's matched up with a safety, he should get wide open for a very easy catch and run one play touchdown. Now, the guy that caught me was the guy on the running back, so you could always change that up and block the tight end as blocking the running back is really what got that open. So we'll go and do that one more time. I said, just, you know, basically hitting this guy in the corner route, and if he has enough speed, he could easily be gone. Go ahead and I'll do that one more time as I just want to get one big catch and run here before I end this. And you can see if you get that on a nice rack catch, there's not a lot of defenders that are going to be able to stop that. This also works against cover one, which we haven't gone over much. So let's go and let's pick cover one hole. So once again, just streak that X route. You're going to see how that helps to pull back the safety and allow this receiver to get wide open once again because of all the, the garbage of these guys bump, bump, you know, bouncing into one another. You're going to want to run this from a hash mark though. You saw that sideline kind of got in my way. But this is the same idea. You can see how once again, these routes are gonna set picks on one another and both receivers are pretty much wide open the same way they were against cover zero with the exception of the streak because of that single high safety. The real genius of this play though is against defenses like cover three. So we're gonna go and pick that. Then on defense, we're gonna go over and go back to the nickel, pick the cover three sky. Against cover three, you can run from a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am here. Then I can motion out this running back. I can motion across the X route too, but the running back does a little bit more to spread the defense. It goes further out. Then I'm gonna put the B receiver on a fade also. And I probably wanna switch that drag to a flat because that flat will get open once again as we went over in a previous play. Uh, it's something I could use as a check down over and over. But I wanna focus on the one play touchdown, which is going to be the tight end. So let's go and let's motion this out. Out. The tight end, uh, this play looks somewhat similar to something I've, sh I've shown in another offense from this video, where the B route's gonna get up the field a lot faster. And it's gonna give me an opportunity to at least get a play inside of the safety. Now it has one play touchdown capability, but we'll have to do that more than one time because you know this is a play that at the very least you're gonna get a big play right in front of the safety. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm streak the B route this time because I want him to just get up that field as quick as possible because that's really the key here. As you can see, I could bullet and pass lead away from that safety and get a very easy one play touchdown with the streak being more successful than the fade. 
Once again, I really just want to, you know, this this guy here, the slower the better because I really want that safety to turn and run with that, uh, that you know, that streak going past him. And the second I see him turn and run, that's when I'm throwing the ball. As you can see, the ball is probably already out of my hands, probably mostly more because of the pressure. I had a defensive tackle in my face, but I know that's what's going to happen is the ball, you know, basically just bullet and pass it away from that safety. And this tight end is definitely fast enough to get a one-play touchdown with this look as this cornerback here is being held down by that corner route once again. He's way too far out of place to make a play. So I'll do that again, but I'll put everybody on streaks. As it really doesn't matter. Like I said, I got my check down on the left, which is the X route. But the streak just seems to get up the field a little bit quicker. And as long as I can get a good, uh, get some good pass pro, I mean, that's a one-play touchdown nobody's going to be expecting against cover three. One of the reasons I like this play is because cover three is one of the hardest plays that a one-play touchdown against. And you have two different ways to hit a one-play touchdown with this particular concept. The other way is to run it from the other hash mark. And now I'm going to either, you know, I can do the same thing by motioning out the running back or I can motion across the X receiver. It really doesn't matter. But all I'm going to do to change this play up this time is put everybody on streaks, put everybody, uh, you know, on, uh, on go routes on the other side. And then I'm also going to streak or fade the X route. I find it works better if you fade the X route. But running this from a hash mark to this side with all these streaks is going to get this guy open up the seam very easily on the other side. Now that was actually, he got bumped around a lot and it still worked out. I'm going to do it again with the X route on a streak just to show you guys that it works the exact same way. It really doesn't matter. The corner route's the most important part. This is a concept that I've put out in a lot of different uh, offenses. As you can see, I just had the bullet and passing away from the safety and it's just wide open because the cornerback's nowhere near to help out. This same setup is a one-play touchdown against cover four as well. Cover four match, so let's go let's pick cover four quarters. Against cover four, it's pretty much going to be the same setup. I'm just going to motion this guy out, put him on a fade, and then put the B route on a fade. I don't really have to do anything else, as the A route here is just going to split right down the middle and be a very easy one-play touchdown once again, wide open. The one dink and dunk play that I do want to spend a lot of time on, though, is the shallow cross. This is going to be your dink and dunk play against just about every single zone and man coverage in the game. This play here can be your everything. You can go double drag simply by putting the A route on a, on a, uh, a drag, and now I have the A tight end and the X receiver, which is a, a route a concept that gets open against any man or zone. The longer you hold it, the better. As you can see right there, I mean, I threw a little bit early and I threw him into contact. But like I said, if I wait, he's always going to get open once he gets past those zones at some point. So you can make a double drags concept like that, but you can also make something out of the bunch concept that I was showing earlier simply by motioning this guy across. Now this looks like a man zero. I'm not sure if it's going to work here, but again, zone coverages, if you motion this guy across and put the Y receiver on a streak, you're going to have um, a good corner route concept. Now, like I said, this here, not necessarily going to work. As you can see here, the drag was wide open once again, though, because like I said, I can do that just about all game. And that's a 40 yard play on a simple drag. Now, if you get a zone coverage like cover three, um, you can see uh, it's going to be better if you put the uh, the X receiver on that uh, on that streak or a fade, and then just you know give yourself another drag option from somewhere else. And you can see how this guy's going to get open every single time, whether it's cover three, cover four, cover two is going to be the same way. Now for cover three and cover four, if you do that same motion and do that same setup, you could also put the X route on a flat. And you'll see that he just gets open for an instant throw. You can just you know do a nice little catch and run for 10 yards just about every single time. So that's pretty much it for dink and dunk, but that's also a one-play touchdown against a lot of different defenses as well. So I'm going to pick that. I'm going to start off with cover two zone. Now against cover two, you can't really split the center because of how this route is designed. But if I motion him over once again, and I put the Y receiver on a streak to pull back the safety and the X uh, on a flat, which is a trick I'll show you guys against cover three, the, uh, the flat route. But if I put that X on a flat, he's going to pull that cornerback down. And then at this point, I mean, if I really want to with the A route, I can put him on some sort of check down or I can just pass block him. It really doesn't matter. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm really shooting for that B receiver. As you can see, I mean, I got a horrible throw, but he's going to be wide open. I don't know how many great throws I'm going to get because Justin Fields' accuracy is kind of crazy in this game. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's really the play. I don't need, like I said, the tight end, the running back. I don't need any of that because I got my check down the X route. If I really want to get that out quick, I can throw that out quick. Like I said, it's going to be better against cover three and cover four because they drop back. But I have that check down right away against pretty much any zone other than hard flats. And if I get my opponent the hard flat because of that, it's going to just make the uh, the A, or I'm sorry, the B route get open even more. So that's pretty much the play. Like I said, we'll do it one more time, try to get a completion. To, to the B route. As you can see, we have a catch and run, one play touchdown opportunity as long as we drop it in the bucket there because we have those other routes pulling apart the zones. 
Now, this play doesn't really hit a lot of one-play touchdowns against a lot of different zones other than cover two, but it also going to be a one-play touchdown against cover four quarters. So let's go and let's pick that, and then defense will pick cover four match. Cover four is pretty easy to glitch. You just need five routes that go deeper than 10 yards. So I'm going to motion out the running back for the first time in this video, and I'm going to put him on a 10-yard out route because I don't want him running that deep route. I want to I want to have the middle of the field wide open. So I'm going to put him on a 10-yard out route. I'm going to put the X route on a 10-yard out route, and then I'm going to put the tight end on a streak because the tight end is going to be the play. All these other, you know, quarter zones are just going to basically be uh, left open as you can see here the tight end is running straight down the middle of the field with nobody covering him the reason this play works is because you have five routes going over 10 yards and there's only four deep coverage quarter zones so there's not a lot of matching principles designed for a streaking tight end the tight end is usually the last one that gets picked up so you can see because i have all these other zone beaters going that this particular player just gets forgotten in coverage and just runs down the center of the field and gets opened by about 10 to 20 to even 30 yards of space by the time the ball's in the air so i'll do that one more time like i said i the you know i should need to do that but uh yeah all you gotta really do is guy like i said 10 yard out routes on the outside you have five routes that are going over 10 yards the tight end's usually going to be the one that gets forgotten and even with pressure i mean i could just lob that up at any point in time because i know he's going to get wide open this play also has a lot of success against man coverages though so let's go and let's pick that and then we're going to pick uh, man zero blitz now against man zero i'm going to make that motion one more time i'm going to go ahead i'm going to check and release my running back and also check and release my tight end and i'm just going to put the uh the the wide receiver on a streak all these check and releases are really designed um, to just give me, uh, you know, a little bit more pass pro. And now you can see how the streaking receiver just gets wide open because a lot of these times these routes are going to bump into one another. It really can depend on what man zero blitz you're looking at, depending on who's blitzing. But the drag receiver is really what causes this receiver to get wide open. As this outside quarterback here has to follow him across. And he basically sets a pick on half the DBs. So this guy just runs around the pile and is wide open. But I also could have threw to this corner route as well. So that streak might not always get open based off of what defense you're looking at, but this corner route will. I picked random man blitzes, so I might get some cover twos and some cover ones in there. But you can see here, this is obviously a double safety blitz. I'll go ahead and uh, make my adjustments with my, my check and releases. And you can see how this guy is just consistently getting open. I mean, where was the defender there? There was nobody even close. As it looks like his defensive player just like glitched out. There was nobody around. And look how that drag route concept works again as 12 just gets wide open and 37 and 25 are just dancing with each other as he just completely sets a pick and washes him out of the play once again. I mean, he's 20 yards behind by the time I throw this ball. And then last but not least, this is also your one play touchdown against Cub 4 regular. So let's go and let's pick that. Then we'll pick uh, Cub 4 drop. Setup's so gonna be pretty similar. You gotta motion out this running back. I'm gonna run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field because I need the extra space. But uh, but that's really all you gotta do. The the X route once again. I can put him on a flat. I can steal that all game. It's gonna work best from a hash mark. But you can just get a good catch and run. You know, five, six, seven yards every single time as a check down if you throw it right away. But I'm gonna focus on the one play touchdown. All I'm really gonna do is motion this running back out, put the A route on the street, put the RB route on the street. That's the most important part. And then I just have to buy time, which isn't too difficult considering that there's not a lot of guys in the pocket. But the longer I wait, the more time I have to this receiver to get past that safety as I turn him up field and just drop it in the bucket right in the corner of the end zone. So that might be one of the harder throws to make. But it's still one of the uh, the more important um, you know parts to the scheme because cover four is definitely one of the uh, the bigger issues when it comes to one play touchdowns with this scheme. As there's really not a lot of great. I don't have a lot of post routes. This route works because for whatever reason this free safety you can see he's turning and running with these streaks. They're both reacting to the two streaks on that side. I don't know why, but I'll take it. As you can see, I'm holding that ball as long as possible because the more I hold it, if I I want to let that guy get further away. You know what I mean? I want to wait till he crosses him, till he crosses this parallel mark before I get that ball out of my hand because now he's just too far away to make a play. And then I can just bullet and pass it up to the corner of the end zone and have an opportunity as long as I have you know a pretty good receiver. Or you can throw it short underneath and just get a big play. It'll work the same way that way. But I'm trying to hit a one-play touchdown. So next up, we have the Owen Trap. Good inside run, especially against spread defenses. I mean, we have a dominant defensive tackle here, and this 0-1 trap is just, you know, basically putting him in a bad position. Uh, is this something you can flip this with the right stick too and kind of change it up, but I don't find it's necessary. I find it's good to just run it as is. I don't know if there's really a read structure when it comes to flipping the run. Uh, but if they pack the box too much, I mean, you really want to loosely spread uh, defensive front for a play like this. If they pack the box too much or the, or the gaps are too tight, it won't work out. And last but not least, we have the Y-Stick Dig. Let's go and let's pick that. 
Start off with uh, cover two, cover two, Tampa two. A couple different ways you could do it with Tampa two. I'm going to go and motion the ball across, though. One of the ways is to motion across the tight end, put him on a streak, then you put the X route on a drag, and this will basically create a opportunity for the Y route as he gets open outside, although I kind of like, you know, kind of walked into that pressure. You can also motion this guy in. You don't have to motion across the tight end. That's a decent option to put the A route on a drag, although I messed that up because the drag never came, but I, I hiked the ball before I made the drag. But you can see how that can get open outside. Another option is to put the B route on a 10-yard out route, and that will create a throwing lane for the X receiver going the other way. So you really have two different ways. You can attack outside, or you can attack over the middle with the, the double in route there. Play also has success against cover two man. Same setup, really. Just put the B route on a 10-yard out route. The, uh, the wheel route doesn't work as good. But the double in route does, as I threw it way too early before he got across the field. But we're going to do that one more time. Like I said dragging the A route would make more sense, and blocking the running back would make more sense if you know it's a man coverage. So here we go one more time. The X route's actually lit up now, so it's going to be even easier. As you can see, same results as cover two zone. Next up, we got cover one hole. Against cover one, just put the, uh, the X route on an in, a five yard in. And a lot of times, he can just set a pick. For the Y route, as you can see, he just gets wide open over the top here for a very easy one play touchdown based off of the fact that the in route just gets in the defender's way. And it's very consistent because the depth is just perfect. Although there he missed. So if he doesn't get that, you don't want to necessarily. I mean, you can sometimes get it anyway. You can sometimes turn up and run uh, for it. If you're going to do that, though, you pretty much want to put the A route or maybe even the B route on a streak, put the A route on a drag or something. Just something to pull that safety back. As you can see here, we don't even have that set up now and still can have success, although that was an underthrown ball. So if you have a really fast receiver, that wheel route can be successful regardless. But if you don't have a really fast receiver, the in route is going to be the best way to go. As you can see here, he just runs and sets a pick for this receiver. It's just a, it's just a pick play concept. You get a very easy one play touchdown in multiple different ways. You don't really have to motion in the um, the Y route either. I just do that because it gets across the field a lot faster. But you can see how it gets open regardless. It's not really a route that needs motioning. I just want to get open faster than it normally does. Next up, we have cover zero. For cover zero, just check and release the running back. That's all you really got to do. We're going to have the same success with the same route, which is going to be the X route. It's essentially a post route. It's like a double post. And post routes always get open against cover zero. I didn't quite get the one-play touchdown there, but it's still a very big play. You can also drag the, uh, the, the um, you know, give, I can give myself double drags, really. That wheel route doesn't really work here. But uh, you can see how, you know, he still gets inside. I don't know if I check and release the running back. That might be the only reason why that didn't work out. Gonna do that one more time. Like I said, the uh, the wheel route's not really in play. Just gotta wait for that post route, that double post, to get past. And yeah, whatever. He didn't catch it, but you can see how it's a one play touchdown opportunity. I'm just gonna move on. Next up, we have the Y sale. So let's pick that. We'll go uh, cover two to start. So we're just going to motion this guy across and put the other two guys on that side on fades. And the B right here is just going to like super split this defense because obviously, you know, the routes pulling the safeties apart are pretty helpful. Got a pretty good high-low route concept too between the tight end and the RB route here with really no adjustments. If you want to just take that, you know what I mean? Like that's something where you could really just run the high-low between them and wherever the... If, this, if the cornerback outside drops back, you got to throw it underneath. But if he drops down, you can throw it to the A route. Although he's taking pretty good depth here. And I still feel like I can take that. As you can see right there, man, I'm just going to pull that back. So you can really take either one against cover two. That's going to be your con that concept or against any zone coverage, really. Next up, we'll choose cover four match. Same idea. This motion's got to cross. Put the running back on a wheel, too. That'll help to really mess up the coverages. As you can see, the the tight ends, the you know, he just gets forgotten. Like, he wasn't really covered there. I think they were double teaming the running back. You don't have to do the running back, though. You can leave the running back alone. 
And the B route can have a lot of success too. As you can see here, I mean, they're just like, you know, this cornerback supposed to get back there and, and cover this guy. Like, there's really a couple different options. You can really attack the cover for two different ways. Next up, we got red zone scissors. We're going to start off with Tampa 2. The running back's a good play um, to a lot of different things. But against cover 2, I'm just going to streak the A route. And the B route here uh, will split those safeties. As you can see, the t the the... the Linebacker in the middle of the field actually has to eventually pay attention because next up we'll do cover two man right there. So I'll streak the running back, put the tight end on a 10 yard out route, put the Y route on a 10 yard out route. And this is going to be the play as I really just need to split the field here. And you can see how there's an opportunity between the safeties and cover two. Next up, we'll do that again, but we're going to pick cover one hole. I find it's best to probably shorten the B route by smart routing it to try to get him across the field a little bit faster. But the B route's the play. So you just streak the tight end, and then you just need a good throw here to get across that safety. You can have a very easy one play touchdown against cover one. I don't think I did what I do. I didn't do Overstone Brave yet. I'm just going to go on my motions guy across, put the Y route on a slant, and then, uh, you know, check and release the running back. And that slant there. You can see crossed up the, uh, you basically caused the two cornerbacks to run into each other. I'm not sure if you'll get that look anywhere on the field. You, sometimes you got to run from a hash mark to the open side. I think that's best. I think it's best to just put the X round something short because you don't want that defender accidentally, you know, turning into anything. As you can see here, once again, like I say, he just gets in the cornerback's way enough. Sometimes it's better than others. But this is really the best option from this play for cover zero, as you really have a couple different options. Let's go let's do that again. I said hopefully they slam into each other. Slam the brakes. And you know, like I said, it's just you don't need a lot, but um, just anything to just make that cornerback lose acceleration. As I messed up the whole play here. Let's do that one more time just to show some consistency. Like I said, I'm letting it set because the point is I want that cornerback behind that cornerback to run into them and it looks like it's going to work out just fine here although you can see it also works if you just throw it early because um you know a lot of times that cornerback is waiting for the out route like for him to break out so if i just throw it before he breaks out a lot of times he's just going up the field so it's going to do that one more time like i said there you know now it's just a run to the ball i mean he's getting it pretty much every time and i'm not even really getting the best pass leads but you can see he's getting passed Let's pick that again. Let's do cover three. So I'm streaked to the tight end, put the running back on a wheel. I'm running from a hash mark here too, which is kind of important. I'm going to slide my protection over to try to pick up Chris Jones. And uh, that's pretty much all she wrote because this B route here is going to get open over that cornerback who's getting held down by the comeback route. Let's we'll do cover four quarters. So I'm running from a hash, motion sky across, streak the A and Y route, and put the running back on a wheel. That's all you're really going to do. That safety is going to be responsible for that B route, and he knows it because he's just going to be like mad late trying to get over. Uh, but that's fine because that's, you know, that's the point anyway for my for my offense. Very easy one play touchdown. Next up, we'll choose cover four regular. We got to go to another formation, then we got to go to the dollar. So let's go cover drop. So I'll streak the A route. That's all you really got to do. And uh, we just got to wait a long time. I mean, there's not much of a pass rush. But once the B route gets inside of the safety here, you just basically bullet it and, you know, throw it to the corner because the cornerback is um, held down by the uh, the comeback route on the left side. All right, next up we got the mesh spot. I'm going to go I'm gonna go random. This here, this is just a very good dink and dunk play. I know a lot of people that really like to throw this running back. Um, I don't typically like to do that, although you can throw it immediately out underneath a zone cover, as you can see right there. Didn't really work out. Like I said, you can get it out quick, though. I mean, this is not a horrible option, but you really got to get out quick. If you wait till it turns up the field, you're going to throw an interception. So, especially against zone coverages or man coverages. But this play is really about the crossing receivers anyway, as these double drags are really the best way to go. And you can, you know, they're not going to always get you a ton of yards, but especially against man coverage, but against zone coverage, these get you a little bit of a better catch and run. And they'll typically clear the center for this guy. So if your opponent, if your user middle linebacker on the defensive side, chases those uh, double drags which a lot of people do you'll typically get the b route open so that's really the number one thing when it comes to this particular play except we got the inside zone i mean this year if they're not packing the box enough you know it's just a good uh it's just a good run play it's best against cover two man in zone as well next up we got the double slant 
I'm going to start off with cover two. So I'm just going to put the RB route on a streak and the B route on a flat. And you can really attack this tight end to the outside here or the running back. As you can see, that safety really has to get over for, the, for that wheel route. So you have two options there. But you also have the option to the, the B route. So I'm going to go ahead and put the... I mean, I can put the running back on a streak or I can put the tight end uh, on a streak. I can even put the tight end on a 10-yard out route and streak the running back to kind of, you know, have best of both worlds. But at the end of the day, I just need to make sure that I have the X route over here on a 10-yard out route also. And the B route really has a good opportunity to split the safeties there as there's just a lot going on for that safety to basically uh, try to pick up because the 10-yard out route will pull them apart and the streak will pull them back. Except we'll pick that again and we'll pick cover two man. This play here pretty much can do the same setup because we're going to go after the same route. The, man, the, the Y route and the X route are really good man beaters, by the way. I mean, they're slants. So those will work against any man coverage. But this is pretty much the look here. Just going to go ahead and wait for that B route to materialize one more time. And you can see how we get another very easy one play touchdown. You can motion this guy across and put the Y route on a streak. Say put the, uh, the A route on a 10 yard out route just for shits and giggles. You can also shorten the, uh, the B route with a, um, with a uh, smart route to try to bring it a little bit shorter because that way it'll get open a little bit faster because you can see I mean, Chris Jones is already like right in my face. He just basically like ran over my left guard. So I'm definitely going to have to uh, double team that guy. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, really, you know, you can bring this guy across. Except if I want to hold that corner back down, I mean, I can just do whatever I want there. I can smoke this guy. I'm just holding that corner back down. But like I said, shorting that route can help to get him open a little quicker. And, I mean, I didn't know that if I double team Chris Jones, it would just let the fucking defensive end run free. He's not that good. So let's go ahead and let's just slide my protection. Let's try that. Because that was just fucking insane. Let's go and let's do that again. Like I said, I'm trying to just trying to hold it down. So I can get this B route off. As you can see, the safety, um, you know, he was, I mean, that's, it's, it's a good, it's a big play. Uh, as we did get the one play touchdown because you kind of played the ball bad. But you can see how it's still going to work. It's still going to get outside of the safety and on, above the corner. Next up, we're going to do that again. We're going to pick cover three this time. So streak the A route, put the RB route on a pass block, and put the X route on a comeback route. So what we're going to do, run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field, but I didn't mention that. And the B route here can split the field or can't split the safety in the cornerback as the cornerback stays down on the comeback route. Next up, we'll do cover four, starting off with cover four match. Against cover four, run from a hash mark to the open side of the field, put the running back on a streak, and the B route will get forgotten pretty easily uh, amongst all the uh, all the routes on the right side. So another, you know, cover four is easy to glitch if you know how to manipulate the coverages, but uh, it's very easy. I'll do that again. So I just streak the, the running back. And, you know, I guess once the uh, the running back comes into the safety's area, it just completely stops to try to to try to pick that route up rather than take care of the post route. I'm guessing that the post route gets passed off to the free safety, but it's too late. Next up, we'll do regular cover four. Let's go to the dollar for that. Against cover four, run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Motion across the B route. Put the Y route on a streak, the X route on a comeback. Smart route at 10 yards and put the A route on a streak and the RB route on a streak. And you're going to see how the B route here can really get open outside above that cornerback as long as I get a good throw, which I really thought I wasn't going to catch. But you can see how that's very glitchy against cover four. Next up, we got the PA deep cross. I'm going to go to pick that, and we're going to pick random on defense. The A route, I'm sorry, the B route's really the uh, the best man beater on the play, but I'm going to make some adjustments where I'm going to create myself some other options. We're going to put the A route on an in route or a drag. It's really up to you. But I find that streaking the X route and putting the A route on a five-yard in is going to give you three levels of passing, including uh, this guy here, who's not really going to beat man coverage too well. As you can see, we had a man coverage there. That I should have really held that for the uh, for the B route. But let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, this is my first read, though. I'm watching this tight end. If he's there, I'll get that. You know, I'll take that all day, give myself a nice check and release. You can see the tight end does turn into a blocker, which is nice, and it will help you out down the field as well. That typically only beats zone, though, where the other two routes are a little bit better when it comes to beating uh, man coverage. As you can see right here, the B route, you know, that, that, that X route is the MVP because it pulls back the coverage to the point where this guy can get open, and you can get that route all day. So you're really just working from front to back, but the... Um, the Y route only beats zone where the other two routes will beat man coverage. Next up, we got the mesh spot. Go random again. This is another play where every route is pretty much going to get open except for that streak. We're going to really work. I mean, if you throw it to this guy right away, which you've probably seen me do a million times in my gameplays, 
that route will get open immediately under man or zone. You just have to throw it immediately after you hike the ball. Um, although I have noticed that you know people can hard flat that, but the drags can pretty much get open against anything too. Hard flats can stop the drags, but then you can always just wait for the running back to turn up the field and he'll get open against hard flats. Um, you could also throw to the B route here, which will get open against hard flats. Although there I kind of forced it because I just wanted to show it. Uh, the drag is really cool. A lot of users will chase the drags, and a lot of times I'll just leave the B route just wide open, which is really what I'm going to try to attack if the user does play the drags aggressively. But then, like I said, you also have the running back. So there's really four routes here that can go up against just about anything, just as long as you read um, the leverage or the spacing. Like the B route, if the defender's behind them, he's probably going to get open. If it's in front of them, it could be a problem. As you see right there, they're kind of split the, the two uh, zones there. So it really just depends on, you know, are they in front of the guy or behind him, like the drags. You know, that guy, the wire out there, he's kind of in front of him. But I can come back to it and try to make a play. I mean, it's not something where I'm going to get picked just as long as, you know, I throw it where where – I have a, a straight lane to the receiver. I should usually be able to give myself more of a chance than a defender. Except we got the lead read option. Another good run play. You got a, a pull or a um, a pulling um, tight end coming across that uh, can really help lead the way for the quarterback. You're really just watching the uh, the um, the read defender, which is kind of kind of hidden here. As you can see, there's not really, I guess it really is not a read defender, as I'm not really um, having any uh, obstruction from keeping with the quarterback just about every single time, and that's really where the big play is. Although you can see there, that guy kind of shot down on it. So I guess you're supposed to watch the M defender, which is, isn't typical. There's typically a read defender somewhere on the play, but that tight end pulling across makes this a very effective run play uh, based off the fact that who is typically the read defender would be this defensive end above the A tight end. He just gets washed away every single time. And you have an opportunity. I mean, I haven't had a loss yet with the quarterback. Uh, you probably want to put your quarterback on or your ball carrier on conservative. I would say maybe the only thing uh, because you will. I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep doing this until I fumble because eventually you will. But you really have, um, you know, anytime you're running with the quarterback, and you can hand it off at the running back too. I mean, you can go the complete opposite direction by holding the A button and handing it to the running back, which has been, uh, honestly, been there pretty much every single time. And like I said, I mean, the quarterback's probably the much bigger play. But uh, the running back's there. As you can see, there's there's multiple options here. And they both go in wide looping angles in opposite directions, which makes this play uh, very tricky for people to try to defend. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to force uh, the computer's hand here. And I'm going to go to my coaching adjustments. And I'm going to set the, um, the ball care option defense to conservative so that it focuses on the quarterback. And let's see if that changes anything. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to do this again. Like I say, you can see that that defender is shooting down now which is about the only look um, that you would get. But even with that, I mean, the tight end is coming over to try to help out with that. If he gets over there a little bit quicker, might actually cut that off. So I'm going to do that one more time. Like I said there, um, the option defense isn't there. You know what I mean? It's like even though I said it, you can see it still isn't necessarily the most effective, uh, which most people will have their option defense set, but you can see that guy coming across really picks that up and makes it still a very viable option as I finally fumble, but still got seven yards. That's why I always want to run towards the boundary, run towards being out of bounds so that that doesn't happen as we finally as he finally stops us. But, yeah, I guess the 20 is the read defender, even though it really isn't um, displayed that way. And it's not very consistent. As you can see, he wasn't really doing his job there as we get another five yards. Next up, we got the counter Y. Just a good run in the opposite direction. Uh, as you can see, I mean, a lot of runs are really just inside runs or, you know, up the center or to the left of the quarterback because that's where the handoff is. But this here gives you an opportunity to go the other way. So it's always nice to at least have a run play like that in your arsenal so that your opponent can't just slide their defensive line in the direction of the most likely ball carry. And uh, you can really have some success going in the opposite direction, which is, you know, it's not a huge run, but if your opponent is over committing to one side than it can be. As you can see, I haven't been caught for a loss. I just typically, um, you know, I'm not getting a ton of yards. Uh, but like I said, it's nice. It's only really going to work if your opponent really, um, you know, really commits to one side or really starts sliding their defensive line in that direction. Next up, we got the corners and goes. This is a, a man coverage play. We'll go with man zero. Basically, the A and the Y route are really good man beaters. I'm just going to check and release the, uh, the running backs. Or the running back as you can see i'm going to need that for um you know whatever instant blitzer comes in but uh but the but the y route and the a route are both very good uh man you know beating plays just for a couple of yards uh but you could also put the um the x route 
on a check and or, um, sorry, um, put him on a uh, smart route and it'll shorten the route and then he'll beat man coverage very easily down the field as well. So very easy one play touchdown against cover zero. Next up we got the bench edge dig. Go random. Another play, put the A route on a streak, put the Y route on a drag. And you got your zone beater on the right side and your man beaters on the left side as we have a man coverage there. You can just split the field in half. The streak doesn't really do anything other than pull back coverage for the for the B route. As I forgot to put the um, the Y route on the drag, but um, I mean the 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 two left the, the, even though they're man beaters on the left side, they also beat zone. As you can see there, that was a zone. Here we got a cover two, so it's gonna be an easy route to the B route. Um, but anytime, you know, uh, typically if it's like a cover three or anything like that. Next up, we got the bench swap. We'll just pick random. This is another play where you can just put the A route on a streak. And uh, you really have two options. I mean, I could work the um, the left side, which is really just a bench concept. Uh, the Y route and the X route, both are pretty good uh, against man or zone in that scenario. Or you can work the other side where I have the streak pulling back any zones in the area. And the, uh, the RB route and the... B route will both get open uh, underneath, uh, you know, against pretty much any zone coverage as well. And this is probably a better zone beating play. I'll go ahead and move the ball over because this is going to be best to run from a hash mark to the short side of the field. I find the side with the with the A route uh, pulling back the zone is probably best. Although there we actually had a man coverage and I didn't make a, a good read at all. If it's man, the only thing you really have on this play is the Y and the um, the X route. That's more of a man beating side. As you can see here, we get um, a man coverage and it's 50 50 when it comes to the corner route. I mean, I don't think the corner route's really that great. Uh, I think the Y route's probably best. This looks like a man coverage. The Y route's going to be your best man beater. It's just a simple out route. Um, but uh, you can always um, look for the X route, as I'm guessing we're going to have another another man coverage here, although that was actually a cover for quarters. You can tell by the way that they collapsed on the corner route. But, uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much the play. I mean, this is a good dink and dunk play. I'll try to focus on this side because you can see how that the, the, the zone chuck on the, I think it was the streak or the corner route, really gets the running back open a lot. And that's probably the best receiver on the field, except for the B route, which is also going to be good against zone if I run from a hash mark like this, as we get what looks like a cover two. And we make the play because the, the streaking tight end didn't get back and far enough, quick enough to get the um, – to get the um, the safety pull back, which is why that worked. And like I said, I can pretty much just take this running back all game for whatever I get out of that really quick, easy throw. But a good play nonetheless. Next up, we have the 0-1 trap. It's one of the better inside runs, especially if your opponent has like a spread defense, as you can see. I mean, it really just, um, you know, if it's a tightly packed box, it doesn't necessarily work that much because you kind of need space. But they can still, um, you can see, I mean, Chris Jones is getting, he's shooting right in pretty much every single time. And I'm still getting around him because of the trap block as they're going to they're gonna pick him up eventually. I just have to be patient enough for that uh, trap block to come over. You know, they just they, they turn Chris Jones free, which is never really a great idea. But you can see that it's still it's still working as they're just, they're just letting him in. And then I'm just getting right past him. I'm getting close to five every single time. So very consistent inside run. You could also motion across Cal Quintero here, which is something that will give you what looks like another lead blocker. You can see that it even helps even more to pick up Chris Jones as he comes in. Uh, because, you know, he's uh, he's obviously a problem. I'm going to do that one more time because, like I said, this is helpful to just have him in the way to the point where, you know, at least he's um, somebody could pick him up immediately if he gets in too fast because he's a menace. But I would only use that if uh, you're facing an elite defensive tackle like this. Next up, we have the slant spacing. I'm going to pick random. The B route. It's going to get open against just about any man or zone except cover two. The slant's a decent secondary option, but I really, if I'm calling this, it's because this play here is just really, it's a short yards play. There's no real uh, risk of, of it getting stopped because it's just, it's it's a guarantee. Although there, he kind of broke into that like kind of late. So um, for the most part, it's not something that's going to get defended. I would say this would be about as safe of a fourth and short play as you could call. Next up, we got the RPO alert screen. The B route here is really good cover three off zone play. Uh, as you can see right there, it just kind of floats outside of whatever zone coverage that was. It's good against it's good against zones that drop back like cover three and cover four. This one here looks like it might be the same way. See that guy just drops back. And you can just flip it out real quick for an easy catch and run. Next up, we got the corner strike. No big random. So another play, if I motion across this tight end here, he basically, you know, converts to a drag, and that'll give me good double drag concepts 
to uh, the running back and the tight end, and one of them will get open just about every single time. So you really just have to you know wait to see which one develops better. If you streak or fade the RB route, you got a pretty good high-low concept between the tight end and the B route as well, as one of them should pretty much get open every single time. And if you run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field, they should really both get open. But I'm running this to the open side, so let's go ahead and let's motion it over a little bit. Go ahead, we'll put that RB route on a streak one more time. Like I said, even if it's a man coverage, which is what this looks like to be, this B route is a very good man-beating route. So keep that in mind. If, you, if you're running from a hash mark to the short side of the field, that guy should really get open against anything, man or zone, although cover two probably has the best chance of covering it, which is what that looked like it probably was because that's something. It's not deep enough to take advantage of cover two. This looks like a man coverage. They like said that B route will get open once again. Even the tight end looks like it's being man coverage, which typically a flat route tight end does not do. So this is very a very glitchy play. Like I said, here we go once again. I like that how that tight end kind of curves that route because it gives him like a little bit of an acceleration boost compared to like a normal flat route where he really doesn't do that. This looks like a man cover zero. So like I said, I can get that, that route out pretty quick although they're you know if you're running the, if you want to use that as a man beater you probably want to run that from hash mark to the open side of the field where if you're trying to run it as a zone beater it, it makes sense to throw it to the short side because from the open side or the short side you don't have a lot of time to um to stretch that route out like if it's a man coverage normally the longer the route's being run the better opportunity you have to run away from the coverage so that's the one thing you got to be aware of but overall, these are very good uh, routes, as you can see right here. One, now it says cover three. It doesn't work in zone anymore because I'm running to the Ashmore to the open side of the field. So keep that in mind, but that's a very good play. does have some one-play touchdown capabilities, so we're going to pick that again. We'll pick uh, cover zero. Like I said, it's a very good man-beating route. I'll put the RB route on a fade or a streak once again. It really doesn't matter. And you can see how this route's just going to get open outside for a big catch and run every single time. Although there, I tiptoed to the sideline a little bit. I mean, you don't have to streak that RB route either. You can leave him doing what he's doing. But the bottom line is, like, there, there's just, you know, they're just all all in the way of one another and it's just it's just like stealing against cover zero it's instantly open very big play catch run every time and it's really going to have that effect against cover one man as well so we're going to pick that cover one man like i said don't have to really do anything once again getting outside of that and just i mean you could make that streak one more time to pull that safety back this play also has success against cover three so it's going to pick cover through sky so it runs from a hash mark to the open side of the field Put the RB route of fade and then put the other two receivers on a streak. And once again, once this um, once this cornerback reacts to that uh, that corner route, once it spreads them apart a little bit, just bullet and pass it away from the safety. I'm going to do that again because I didn't mention um, motion across the tight end, even though I did motion across the tight end. So I think that should be obvious, but I'm just going to do it one time. Letting you guys know, and like I said, you get a really easy seam here to, um, you know, to get a one-play touchdown. Except we have the trail, the wide trail. This is really a man-beating play for the most part. As the A route and the RB route are, one, are, are good plays. But you also have this corner route, which is pretty good against zone coverages. Especially if you put the B route on a streak. Cover two, we'll go back to the nickel. Just put the B route on a streak. And put the A route on a flat route. Block your running back. And against cover two, the RB route can be a very big play as long as you get a better catch and run than what I got there it can be a one play touchdown next up wide trail will go with a man coverage we'll go with man zero so this is a good man zero play just going to want to put the running back on a check and release and the b route will get open right away the a route will be a little bit of a deeper route although there I got sacked I'm going to do that again because I really wasn't really watching the x route also gets open I don't know what's going on here I got my check and release up <coughs> Against cover zero, just put the running back in a check and release. And, uh, you know, he typically would be a blocker, but you can see you got a one play touchdown here to the post route. You can block the running back, but that will take away the post route because now we got like a double team on the post route. So, something to think about. But all these other routes win too. I mean, the tight end should win. I'll put the, uh, the RB route on a streak to help with the tight end. The tight end should get open. I mean, it's a man-beating route. He's not really that fast, but he's doing a good job. And then also the drag, obviously, is going to get open. So lots of routes that be man here. Next up, we got the wide trail update. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to show this against cover one. Don't really need any adjustments here at all. The Y route, or the X route, rather. 
She just runs right past everything as long as you get a good throw, which is something I didn't have in the original video. I think I had it against cover zero and cover two only, but apparently it's a very good cover one play. One of the best, really, because you don't really have to do much. You just have to time it. As you can see right there, I threw it way too early. I mean, I could try to pull back, um, you know, if I motion somebody across, if I want to sacrifice, um, you know, the running back, I can make this even easier by motioning across and having them on, you know, something like a streak. Uh, but I don't even need that. I mean, if I'm being honest, like the X route is really, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to show my hand like that as the X route just runs right past it anyway with just better timing than what I've shown so far. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I just need to make a better, a better time throw here. Like I said, that's, you know, he's just running right in front of the safety. I mean, that's just a really easy play. It's about as easy as it gets against cover one. I also didn't have that play. Oh, man, I just messed everything up. I also didn't have that play against... Where are we at here? Against cover four, but I'm willing to bet I can make that beat cover four pretty easily. Cover four is just too easy to beat right now. But, yeah, like I said, fade. Let's see, we get that, you know, that extra out just... I don't know what's going on here, but it looks like the cornerback... looks like the safety is saying that that cornerback has to cover it, which is just too easy. Let's go and let's pick cover three. Against cover three, just got to motion this guy out, put him on a comeback route, then change your mind and motion him back, or at least that's what I hope your opponent will think. Put the RB route on a drag, and now we're going to motion out the running back. We're going to motion across the tight end. It doesn't really matter, but we need somebody to be on a streak on this side to get this guy open over the um, over the cornerback because you need that comeback route. So this play can be a one-play touchdown against a lot of new defenses. Next up, out of the bunch, strong, nasty, we got the inside zone. If your opponent comes down a weak, weak box or, uh, you know, too many holes, not respecting the, the run, you know, playing the pass too heavy, just switch over to the inside zone. It's really that simple. You can motion across one of these receivers or the tight end if you want to get a little bit more of a blocking advantage in the direction you're traveling. Um, as you can see, that can really open up some larger runs. Next up, we got the crack toss. This is a good run play. Uh, these, you know, toss runs are really good. They don't really, teams don't react very well. As you can see, I almost had a big run there. Um, I find sometimes you can motion out the outside receiver, and I find it's helpful, but um, this run can be a little spotty as far as, like, you know, you either get, like, really explosive runs or you just kind of get, like, average runs, but it does a good job of getting into the edge. And, uh, you know, it's something you don't usually see in bunch formations like this. So definitely a good run play to have. And like I said, I do feel like there are some benefits to motion this guy out, especially if it makes that cornerback back up outside. So that is something that can be helpful, but you can see how that guy got in free when he was motioned out. So that part about it, I'm not really too sure, but it's definitely a good run play. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.